Hi guys, my name is White River Rambo for Weld.com and today we're going to talk about how not to weld aluminum. I thought this was going to be an easy video. I thought, hell, we'll do seven or eight things, you know, show some problems. And then I started thinking about more and more and more problems. So here's all the bullet points that we're going to talk about in today's video. Welding polarity, gas coverage, amperage, voltage, direction of travel, gun angle, distance to workpiece, dirty material, working in the wind, working with cold material, cold starts, cold cracking, hot cracking, and crater fills. I'm sure there's a few more. Um, <laughs> not welding aluminum is pretty easy. Let's see if we can help you through some of the troubles you've been having. Man, this spool gunning's easy. No problem. Stand back, bro. I know what's wrong with it. it ain't got no gas in it. All right, this is a pretty easy one. You can tell if we look at our bead closely here, we have soot all the way around everything and then you'll also notice that there's lots of splatter marks okay a little black trail coming off this way um, there's more out in front but um, even if you wipe this off okay it doesn't want to wipe off as good and you can see that you know everything is really black and actually had the gas set at 10 cfh all right and just go to show that no gas and not enough gas are pretty much the same concept. So let's step over here beside and uh, get us a good bead. All right, so same bead. I'm not changing anything other than I turn my gas coverage up to 35 CFH. Let's see how it runs. Huge difference, right? All right, so now that we look at our bead, you can see that there is still some soot around the bead. However, it's not in the weld itself. That's what I want you to pay close attention to. You can see this gray line that is all the way around the bead. That is our etching line. And our soot will simply wipe off. Before we go any further, let's talk about what to look for and what to watch for over on the whiteboard. So before we get too deep into terminologies and leave somebody behind, I wanna make sure that you have a full understanding of what I'm talking about. So I got a little diagram here of our weld. Let's step into it. So obviously up here is our, our nozzle, okay? Our gas nozzle, and then right there is our MIG tip. And then the wire coming out of it, going down, and you notice that the material from the wire is coming apart before it actually reaches our arc or our bead. From where that wire is disintegrating down to our puddle, that is considered to be arc length. Just like the distance from our nozzle down to our part would be distance to workpiece. Now, obviously you need enough gas coverage to contain that fireball and protect the arc from contamination. Anytime you see soot, just like we did on these two welds, that is because your gas coverage isn't covering the entire fireball. Soot around the weld isn't a bad thing. It'll wipe off. However, it is a direct telltale sign of your lack of performance or your lack of gas coverage. We'll get into more of that here in just a second. Down here at the bottom, I also illustrated an etching line. Here it is in red. However, in our last bead, you've seen that it was a white grayish line around our bead. That etching line is very important. That is breaking up the oxidation layer. And anytime you're running your bead, you do not want to step into that, at least not step out of it. When you make steps and are moving during the MIG process, you want that puddle to travel naturally. So I take my wire and I push it up to the front of the puddle and I wait and I let the puddle work out on its own. I never step out of my puddle. All right, now that we have a good understanding of the terminologies and things that we're gonna talk about in the rest of this video, let's talk about incorrect gun angle. 
Maybe you noticed in our first bead that I had the gun pointed almost 90 degrees. We're about 15, 20 degrees in the direction of travel. However, we're right in line with what we're welding on. What if you're trying to get your gun up underneath something and you can't, you have to tilt it about more, or maybe you're trying to reach underneath something in that direction. Well, let's see what improper gun angle will do to a bead. All right, now that was a lot of fun if it was the 4th of July, but it's not, so let's see how bad this is. Looking at the bead, it looks nice and shiny. However, there is a tremendous amount of black soot around there. And if you noticed, we were shooting a lot of sparks out here in the direction that our gun was pointing. Now, all these BBs will stick to your part, okay? If we were to point it back over this way on our bright, shiny piece of metal, um, we would just have little speckles all over the place, and that's just not a good thing. Aside from that, our bead is really tall, and then down here at the end, I actually went from turning this way to turning this way, right? So that doesn't drive the wire down into the weld. Most of this is just superficial on top, so it deprives heat from your weld, it deprives gas coverage from your weld, and it just sucks. So what is the alternative? Well, now this is what's known as a 45 degree neck or a gooseneck, okay? And it will take our straight barrel and allow us the opportunity to reach into those tighter spots or even reach overhead into a tighter spot because I can spin this around and I love using this barrel. It works great. Hopefully there's one available for what you have. It'd be a really good investment. Now let's stand our bead up and run it straight like it should be. So I put my gooseneck tip on. Now let's see if we can run a clean bead. Hell yeah, that's a lot better. And we were able to still reach in to clean that tight space. All right, so when we look close at our bead, you see we just had a least little bit of soot on the end and a least little bit of soot right here at the start. That's no big deal. That is completely tolerable, but notice the difference between improper gun angle and correct gun angle. We don't have hardly any soot around our bead. Our etching line is a lot wider now because we have better gas coverage. That etching line will be wherever you have gas coverage, all right? Our bead's consistent from start to finish. Also note that on this bead over here, we had a lot of spray and a lot of little BBs shot all over the place. This one with correct gun angle, we didn't have any. Everything looks nice and clean, just like the type of work we wanna put our names on. So make sure you have correct gun angle and you'll have better gas coverage, a better bead profile, and overall, a better weld. Let's talk about that big crater right here at the end of that weld. Now, crater fill, if you have a fancy machine, it might be built into it, all right? When you let off the trigger, the heat tapers down and is still putting material into that bead while it cools. Most spool guns don't have that. This one doesn't. One way to fix that is as we're welding, we come to the end, I wanna roll my gun back over into my existing bead and just let it fill up for just a second. Now, that bead might get a little bit wider in that portion, but it's going to fill that hole up. That hole, if left unattended, will create a situation called cold cracking. Now, cold cracking is essentially the weakest part of the weld and anything that's put through vibration or the sort, that's where it's gonna crack out first because it is his weakest point. That crater is created because you have a nice hot molten puddle. And then once you let off heat, it shrinks and sinks. Now this large area, just like this one, is not that big a deal. The worst part of it is that hole right in the center. All right, now if we were to wait an extra second and a half before we let off our pedal, that little hole wouldn't be there. We call it crater fill, all right, to avoid cold cracking. But there's another situation called hot cracking. Let's talk about that next. Hey bud, turn me up five. Yeah, man, no problem. How thick is your workpiece? It don't matter, ain't nothing lives on the sun. <laughs> Crank it up. 
There you go. Whoa, 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 wait just a minute. Look, voltage and amperage are relative to one another and you can't just crank up the heat on this thing and expect a better result. That's not how it works. To get a better understanding of the machine, let's dive into the polarity first. DCEP is how you should run the MIG process for standard steel wire and for aluminum MIG or aluminum spool gun in this case. Um, and that means, DCEP, that means the gun itself is the positive side or the red terminal in your machine, okay? And your work clamp, not your ground clamp, however, in DCEP, that work clamp is the negative side. And what that means is when the wire comes down to the part, the arc actually leaves the gun itself and heads down to the workpiece. Now that, is actually reversed when you run flux core, which is run DCEN. You can see we have a lot of soot around this weld now, and our profile looks completely different. Instead of nice cold ripples like we had over here in these beads, now it is just one smooth worm. Like it's, it has no uh, presence to it whatsoever. And it's kind of low, okay? And then our crater is exceptionally large. Clean that so we can see it, okay? Right in the middle is a nice large crack. We can also look at this part that I have welded here. And this is another uh, situation where we had too low of amps or too low of feed rate and too high of voltage. Okay, now this material is eighth inch thick, just like this that we're working on down here. But you can see in this lap joint where we welded two pieces together, we're moving so fast. Look how elongated our welds are. Okay, the ripples in our welds are really long. And then we're also cracked out right there. Um, and we flip it over and we have cracking at the start of the weld in our base material. So. Having too high of voltage for the base material thickness is always going to cause problems. It may look good, but when it comes down to it, if you're too hot, you're gonna burn something up and it's gonna crack. If it's cracked right after the weld, it's never gonna fix itself. Another thing, our soot, okay? Now our fireball is too hot. Our fireball's escaping from our shielding gas and that's what's causing that soot. So let's turn our voltage down and come back and do a correct bead. But this time we will turn our amps up and run a higher wire speed. In that last weld, let's have some audio, Mr. Producer Man. You hear that? Okay, we can't hear our wire feed and we can't hear that ripple going into our puddle. Now, this time, I'm gonna turn my wire feed speed up, which is going to decrease my voltage and my arc length is going to be much shorter now and it's going to crackle and pop all over the place. Let's try it. Well, it, it would have had I, had I turned it up. That's actually a good weld. I'll tell you what, let's do it one more time. How's that? Okay, so in that weld, you could see that we had a handful of little spray BBs going from side to side, but the audio is really what you should pay attention to. That just, Right? It, it sounds like you're cooking 200 pounds of bacon and you have a megaphone beside it, right? It's just super loud and you may feel like you're having to move a little faster than normal because you have so much wire coming out at once. Another telltale sign of that is as we look at our bead is the rings in our bead. Now over here um, and some of these other beads, we have a nice little half moon in our ripples as we come across. But on this one, you can see as I clean it up here a little bit that that, that ring starts there and then the middle of it is there. There's it's probably three eighths of an inch 
All right, that's how long our, our ripples are football shaped. And we, we have so much wire coming out, we're moving so fast, our puddle is staying hot longer and it is still molten when it leaves the shielding gas. So you can see um, it's not clean ripples. It'll look like the ripples have pimples in between them everywhere. And all in all, it just, it kind of looks ugly. Not to mention your craters will be larger with too much wire feed speed because you're punching wire into the base material and it will go deeper. So that will leave the crater a lot deeper and like I can, I can put the whole crown of my small finger in there and it just, it goes away versus this one where it'd be right up on top. Yo, don't forget to join us over on the Weld app for your Android and iOS. It's a social platform specifically designed for welders, fitters, farmers, fabricators, and friends of the welding community. Now, premium members get to take part in monthly giveaways. We got online job boards, a welding calculator. There's a marketplace where you can buy and sell welding equipment and, and your artwork that you've built and all kinds of stuff. So come on over and join us on the Weld. The best part about Weld is the premium content like hosts like myself share about our trade, all right? So no matter what part of the trade you're looking to get into, Weld has you covered. I'm your host, White River Rambo, and I'll see you all on the next one.